Hello friends. Today we are going to talk about a topic which is very interesting that is deep sea physiology or high atmospheric pressure physiology. Myself Dr. Prafull Thore Rao, tutor in Department of Physiology in Diva Patel Medical College, Kolhapur. So let us start. This is an image of underwater fish and flora and fauna. This is a very interesting image because since the beginning of the time, mankind has been fascinated what lies underwater. Now, today the technology has developed to such an extent that the, the dream has come close to the reality where we can almost go anywhere underwater. But what happens to the human body during such endeavor? So, the changes in deep sea physiology or high atmospheric pressure is because of the pressure which is built under water and what happens to the air that we are breathing. So, the atmospheric pressure of 70, 760 mmHg at sea level is considered as one atmospheric pressure. This is the pressure exerted when a person is standing at a sea level. Now, this pressure when a person is diving under water will increase as he go on deeper and deeper. Now, the pressure increases by one atmosphere for a depth of every 10 meters or 33 feet. The volume of the gases also goes on decreasing because of the Boyle's law. So, as the person goes underwater, the pressure increases as well as the volume decreases. The high atmospheric pressure seen in deep sea diving or going under sea in a submarine or seen in Kaisen's worker that is men who dig under water tunnel. This has a commercial application also. Effect of increased atmospheric pressure at the depth of more than 30 meters or more than 100 feet may include caving in of the chest, damage to the face, squeezing of the air in paranasal sinuses and middle ear. So, it concludes that it is very risky to go underwater without any protection. What happens at the underwater is the increase in the partial pressure of gases, specifically oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide. This is an image which comes to mind when a person is thinking about deep sea divers. You must have seen on the National Geographic or Discovery channels that the person who is filming underwater or going for recreational purposes carries a mask, a wetsuit and a tank. The tank contains the compressed air. The other applications may also include besides the research and recreational purposes, the commercial activity which can be seen in case of offshore drilling that is to exploit the underwater resources like oil, gas, minerals. You can see that the person who is wearing the suit is a hard suit with face protection as well. The protection required as the person goes deeper can increase to such an extent that you almost require a very strong metallic protection so that the facial and the torso is protected. This is an image of the US Navy mark suits which are done for the underwater explorations. Now what are the physiological problems associated with high pressure on respiratory gases? The effect of increased PO2 may be acute or chronic. The acute oxygen toxicity occurs on exposure to full atmospheric pressure of the oxygen. Now this acute exposure can also be caused because of the increase in the atmospheric pressure but the duration could be smaller. The chronic exposure may be a small intensity pressure but may be for a larger duration. What happens is basically the molecular oxygen is converted into an active oxygen that is a superoxide anion which is a free radical. The free radicals can cause acute oxygen poisoning and chronic oxygen poisoning. The symptoms mainly are nervous in nature which includes 
disorientation, dizziness, convulsions, and even coma. An exposure of one hour at the underwater level below 100 feet can cause convulsions and coma. The effect of increased partial pressure of the nitrogen can cause the nitrogen to dissolve into bloody fluids and it dissolves even more easily into the fats. The cell membranes of the neurons contains high lipid contents so more oxygen, uh, more nitrogen is dissolved into neurons. The nitrogen dissolved in the cell membrane of the neurons after alter ionic conduct conductance through membrane decreasing neuronal excitability and producing nitrogen toxicity known as nitrogen narcosis. This is a similar effect like a person who is alcohol intoxicated. The effect can produce symptoms like jovial and carefree attitude. This will be followed by the mental impairment, drowsiness and poor muscle coordination. The effect of increased CO2 less commonly seen if the suit is very well designed because the accumulation of CO2 can only happen when the expired CO2 is not properly let out into the ocean. That can also cause respiratory acidosis, varying degree of lethargy and narcosis. One of the most common complaints which can be seen in the deep sea diver is decompression sickness also known as Kaysen's disease. The dysbarism, compressed air sickness, bends and diverse palsies are some of the synonymous words used for the Kaysen's disease. And when the individual ascends rapidly to the sea level from the deep sea, the nitrogen decompresses and escapes from the tissue at a faster rate. So, what happens is the formation of the bubble which accumulates inside the tissue, specifically blood vessels and joint tissues like cartilages. This can produce pain in the joints muscles of the legs and arms. The joint pain accounts for the term known as bends because your limbs are bent and it is very difficult to make any movement. The sensation of snaps, numbness as well as the ischemic symptoms which are referred like choke which is a serious shortness of the breath which is often followed by severe pulmonary edema and occasionally even death. The paralysis of muscles may occur temporarily due to the escape of nitrogen bubbles from the myelin sheath of the motor nerve. This is also called as diverse palsy, which can be reversed sometimes by the use of decompression chambers. The coronary ischemia or myocardial infarction due to the, cap due to the blockage of the cap coronary capillaries by the nitrogen bubbles can also be seen and the neurological symptoms are associated with the blockage of the blood vessels of the brain. The term decompression is used as a treatment. How do you prevent the decompression sickness? By use of a breathing apparatus called as scuba or self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. This is a very specially designed apparatus for the deep sea divers or use of breathing mixture with helium and low oxygen concentration. When the helium which is a lighter gas than nitrogen is mixed with the low oxygen concentration to avoid the oxygen toxicity, it helps breathe underwater. Another way and the most common way which is done to prevent the decompression sickness is the slow ascent of the deep sea diver. The use of decompression tank. This is a image of decompression tank. You can see that the person can relax in the decompression tank. The time required in the decompression tank for a person who has dived to the depth of the sea requires much more longer duration to recover than the amount of work which is done under the sea. Suppose a diver works for one hour, the time required 
for the decompression is almost around 3 hours so the requirement of the time for the person to dissipate all the nitrogen which is accumulated is quite long this is an image of a scuba diving suit which is showing the different parts like mask the regulator the snorkel the weight suit the tank and other parts like gloves boots and fins which are helping the diver in the swimming the most important part is the regulator the person who is deep sea diving is going to use an open regulator what happens in this case is the person will only utilize the compressed air for the inspiratory process the expired gas will be released into the ocean like co2 so the amount of gas needs to be carried in the tank is reduced and the efficiency of the instrument increases while concluding the today's topic i would also like to discuss some of the recent experimental things that are being done in deep sea diving like liquid breathing liquid breathing is associated with the chemicals known as perfluorocarbons which are saturated in oxygen and they are being proposed for the use in deep sea diving these chemicals function just like blood which is to exchange the oxygen and co2 in the body they are also have other medical application in the treatment of severe pulmonary and cardiac trauma especially in pediatric cases the reason that this method is being explored is because the fluid which is utilized can be tested in different animals in fact animals have already been tested by the use of this fluid like rats you can see that the rat which is lying or uh, immersed in a fluid which is perfluorocarbon saturated with oxygen is not drowning but basically able to breathe under water just like a fish now the difficulty arises in case of humans because the oxygen supply required to the brain of a human which is a very large brain is massive so ischemia may develop in case of pfc users also the quality of the ps pfc which is a very viscous fluid can produces respiratory discomfort and other respiratory complication so that concludes my today's lectures thank you